Hey guys, Chris Serino here from the Sultana Education Foundation. We're here today in the Holt Education Center. And I'm here to tell you about one of the most common but also least known fish in the whole Chesapeake Bay, the hog choker. Now a hog choker is kind of like a miniature flounder. In fact, this little guy is closely related to a flounder, but you've probably never seen one because they live on the bottom. They're perfectly adapted for that habitat and they never really get larger than maybe the size of my hand, about nine inches from tail to snout. Uh, these little guys are perfectly camouflaged to live on the bottom. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about their life cycle next. So when a hog choker starts its life cycle, it's really just like any other fish, and that's one of the wildest things about it. It starts off looking almost like a little tadpole, and when it's young, it's actually swimming vertically, just like any other fish, but as it grows older, one of its eyeballs migrates around its head to join the other eye and then it becomes a flatfish and then is adapted to living flat on the bottom of the Chesapeake Bay. All right, so one of the things that makes this creature so perfectly adapted for the bottom is its coloration. That color is kind of brownish and mottled, so it blends in perfectly with a muddy or gravelly bottom and of course it's gonna lay flat there. It has kind of some unique fins. Its dorsal fin is long and continuous, and there's no spikes on it, right? Because it doesn't need that protection from birds because he's way on the bottom of the water column. The anal and ventral fins are also joined and continuous. You can see here he's got a little gill plate. You can see right there the two eyeballs right next to each other on its face. And this is a right-handed flatfish, which means when you put him down, the mouth and eyes and head are facing to the right. And lastly, like all fish, he's got this lateral line, a line right along the length of its body, which senses vibrations in the water and helps it find food down there where it's really dark at the bottom of the Chester River. All right, so like all fish in the Chesapeake Bay, this hog choker has a system of camouflage known as counter shading. So again, if you're looking down, he's gonna blend in perfectly with the bottom. But every once in a while, he might swim up. And if you're a predator looking up, at the hog choker. You see his underside is a much lighter, whiter color, and that's gonna allow this fish to blend in with the glare of the sun at the top of the water column. So again, here he blends in with the bottom for predators looking down, and here he blends in with the sky for predators looking up. Okay, so I'm gonna actually try to pick this little guy up. You can watch, see how he's like a suction cup, suctioning up against the side there? Hold that thought is I'm gonna to try to explain how this fish got its name. So when this fish is attached to a, another surface, it's almost like a little suction cup. And as legend has it, back in the old days, watermen would catch these fish and they really didn't have a market for them. And they would sometimes give their bycatch to local farmers who would in turn feed these fish to hogs. And if this fish went down the wrong way and suctioned up to the hog's throat, it would literally choke the hog. Now, is that a true story? I'm not really sure, but it's pretty cool, and I've heard it from many different people, so I'm gonna keep it going. That is how this fish got its name, the hog choker. Again, these fish can survive in anywhere from one part per thousand all the way up to full-on salt water. They're in every river system in the bay, but unless you come hang out with Sultana Education Foundation, you've probably never seen one. So look, let's see if I can even turn my hand a little vertically there, see how he's suctioning there. And that's how that fish got its name, the hog choker. All right, so we're going to go ahead and let these guys go back into the little tank here. Let's see if we can watch them burrow into that gravel. Yeah, look at that. Look how camouflaged they are when they get down into that substrate. You can not even barely even see them. The ubiquitous, mysterious hog choker.